Now I'm always looking for a better Windows XP laptop. So a few years ago, I found a Dell D520, which is this one. This is the Dell D520, which I bought for $5. So I found a better Windows XP laptop, but it comes with a downside. This is the Dell Inspire 9300 which is almost as huge as this screen. This is a 17 inch full HD laptop. And in 2006, this unit cost about 3000 US dollars and was marketed as a desktop replacement PC. But the most important thing this thing has is a dedicated GPU on board. There's just one thing, as you can see from the footage, this thing is really dirty. It has a brand logo on it, but I'm going to clean it, refurbish it, and make it a worthwhile upgrade and make this a great Windows XP gaming laptop. It has some great features, like this external media player, which lets you play CDs and DVDs straight from the outside with these media keys. It also has six USB ports, SD card slot, FireWire, VGA, DVI, S-Video, Ethernet, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, basically everything a desktop has. And this is in 2006. This unit, however, came with no hard drive. I also bought some other things to refurbish and upgrade this unit. We have two gigabytes installed in here. The main thing is that this great video card inside with that ridiculous full HD resolution. That battery needs an update as well. It functions, but it's not the best anymore. Another cool thing is this bass speaker on the bottom. Let's take a look at the laptop, and oh boy, this unit has clearly been used by someone. My guess, it's someone who used to work in the IT field in Germany. But the thing that this thing needs the most is extensive cleaning. It is a bit scuffed, but I can work with that. It's also missing its rubber feet on the bottom. Since it's a desktop replacement machine, this unit will slide around without those. Let's get to work. This is the return of the almighty wet tissue doing the heavy load. I had to scrub this thing pretty intense on the outside, as well as the inside to remove that filth. It has been laying in a storage room for quite some time, and it shows. I purposely neglect cleaning the keyboard here, because I'm going to take it out in a few anyways. Now to remove that Gigatronic sticker. Lucky for me, this is a simple vinyl sticker, so pulling it off is pretty easy by hand. I scrape the rest off with a plastic pick, so I don't scratch and damage the bodywork. The sticker residue is removed simply by using benzene on a dry napkin. I do the same for the overlay stickers near the keyboard, picking them off, then using benzene to remove that residue. Next up, that screen covered in dust. I use a cleaning cloth to get the primary filth off, then use a dry cloth with window cleaner to remove the rest of the residue. With that window cleaner, which has alcohol in it, I clean up some more of the laptop. With that plastic spudger, I get into that narrow space. The side holds that hard drive case, which has markings on it. An easy removal with benzene. Removing the keyboard is a pretty easy task. With that plastic spudger, by wrenching the sides, the keyboard is attached with two Phillips head screws and can be removed once these are loose. The data cable is a bit tight, but can be detached with a hard pull. I place in the new keyboard the same way I took out the previous one. For a good measure, I clean out some dirt with the air blower then place back the top cover. That little nubby is way past its due date, so I replace it with a fresh new one. The laptop currently holds 2GB of DDR2 so dim memory. I want to upgrade this to 2GB of RAM. While opened up, I see that the metallic resting panel for the cover has some early stages of aquatic rust on it. With a good scrub, I get most of it off. Now to get to the insides of the laptop and see what refurbishing I need to do, I remove the keyboard again. Took off the screen by detaching the hinges and remove screws that were underneath the keyboard. This opened up the way for removing the bottom plate. It did take me some time into removing it. I take that blower and remove the first signs of dust. There's a lot here. The CPU paste isn't present and the vapor chamber is full of dust. I remove the whatever is left of it old paste. I then blow out the vapor chamber from its dust. Time to install new paste for the CPU and place back the copper guider. The discrete GPU is up next. I remove the GPU as a whole, and the copper guider as well as the vapor chamber have dust all around them. I also clean out the dust underneath the GPU, then place it back. Now it's time to get to the GPU core. I remove the top plate to reveal the GPU chip and clean it with that special cloth. I place new paste on the GPU chip as well then close it all up. Once that is all done, I close up the laptop and voila, the machine doesn't slide all over the place that easy any longer. I also ordered a fresh new aftermarket battery for this unit. 
it is stated that this unit will run about one and a half hours on a full charge. This laptop uses a pod connector for its hard drive connectivity, not the fastest, but it's sufficient enough to run the games at reasonable 2006 speed. I bought this pod case with a special Dell adapter that goes over the pins. This is a Dogfish 120GB SSD that will store Windows XP and all the games. I wasn't sure if I bought the correct items overall, but I slid this thing in and it connected properly. Now this laptop can take a USB OS install, but I have a special Dell Windows XP CD that holds most Dell drivers for any Dell laptop. So I clean out the DVD drive, so I won't run in any install problems because of a read error. At first boot, the BIOS checks that SSD, the battery is perfect, and I select booting from the DVD drive as the primary option. Here's the thing, installing Windows XP is super boring, so I'm going to speed up this process for you, the viewer. And after 40 minutes or so, we get greeted by that green hill. The Dell CD took care of most of the hard work, installing the proper drivers. It's visible though, that at least the GPU driver isn't installed because of the frame drops. Dell has all the drivers needed for this laptop on its site, so I plug in a USB stick with all these drivers. Again, I'm going to speed this all up, because this took me quite some time. This isn't Windows 10 or 11, you know. Ta-da, here we are. No more yellow question marks as all drivers are properly installed. It all checks out. But that screen resolution, holy crap. Full HD on Windows XP is pretty much a thing. It makes things very hard to read, but I like the space that it gives. For a good measure, I install Windows Service Pack 3 to finalize the Windows XP installation. Now it's time to do some gaming. Installing my games took like a whole day, but I will show you only the 3D games that require much of the discrete GPU. Most of these games date from when this laptop was built or a few years newer. It is a shame that the screen is glossy. If you sit right in front of it, you can play any game fine. Tilt the screen a bit to the side and you lose clear vision. That's why it was a bit hard to capture this footage in a correct manner. In 2006, the most common resolution was 1024 by 768 All games run fine with that resolution. But in some games, I cranked up the settings to see what the GPU can take. There are some games that have a bit of a slowdown, like Need for Speed Most Wanted, shown here. I did crank up the graphic settings higher with anti-aliasing, shadows and more detailed textures, but I didn't have to. Other games like Spore drain the GPU even further, in combination with the CPU to render detailed worlds. GTA San Andreas runs just perfect, however I can never, ever understand why someone would play this game with a mouse and keyboard. Totally unplayable for real bro. I cranked up the setting on Quake Enemy Territory as well to 1600 by 900 but as you can see the game doesn't run that fluid with these specced out settings. And this game would suffice better at the lower frame rates on his laptop. Battlefield 2 runs like a charm. I could ramp up the settings even higher on this one and to think I bought a complete new gaming rig back in 2005 for this game. Uh, this is Lock-On, a flight simulator by Ubisoft. I have no clue how this game works, as I was just mashing buttons to get anything done, and eventually just crashing. Which is nice and all good. Now the true showstopper is Doom 3. Stated to run at high resolutions, this game runs fluid indeed on this unit. I could have ramped the specs even more. This is running in a 1600 by 900 resolution with everything maxed out. Completely ridiculous. Another thing that stands out, the audio on this laptop is truly amazing. It has front speakers, speakers on the top and a bass unit on the bottom. You don't need an external speaker set at all. The board authorized you? Hmm. The board doesn't know the first thing about science. All they want is something to make them more money, some product. Am I happy with the laptop? I shelled out 20 for the laptop and about 30 bucks for the accessories in total 50 bucks. I am very pleased indeed. If you liked this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. A subscribe is even more appreciated and will keep you notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.